Over the last few years, the Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science has welcomed several new faculty members. And every few weeks this spring, we're introducing one of them to you. Tonight, our guest is Dr. Ying Pan, who joined the department in 2017. Thanks for joining us, Ying. Good to see you and welcome to Weather World. Good to see you, John. Thank you very much for having me here. And you're very welcome. And you know, we've known each other for a while. You actually got your PhD at Penn State. Take us through your journey since then and how you ended up back in our department. Yeah, um, I got my PhD at Penn State. That was in 2014. And then I went to do a postdoc at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. It was in Boulder, Colorado. That was in 2015. And it was a wonderful two-year postdoc program where I could actually propose whatever I'd like to do and I could collaborate with all the top notch and the very, very generous scientists there. And also it was during that time, it became more and more clear to me that I would like to help the next generation become the leaders in this field. Got and it. at the same time, I saw the position opening at Penn State I was like, nothing is going to be better than this. Yeah. It was funny that some friends here, they actually didn't notice that I had left for a while. <laughs> and you know, you teach the entire range of students now. You have some freshman undergraduates and you also have students working on their PhD. One course you teach to first year graduate students has a pretty intimidating title, Geophysical Fluid Dynamics. Can you make that a little less intimidating for us? Sure, um, perhaps I can explain it a little bit. Geophysical means atmosphere and ocean. Fluid means something that can change the shape from time to time. And dynamic, dynamics means something how it moves around. And therefore this geophysical fluid dynamics, it's just about how the air and the water would move around and they can change their shape from time to time. And actually life becomes a lot fun when something can change the shape. Now, the topics in that course certainly overlap with your research interests. One of those is broadly known as turbulence. Now that's a word that many viewers are probably familiar with, but what do you mean by turbulence? And, and what are some of the questions you're trying to answer there? Yeah, turbulence refers to whatever chaotic fluid motions. And sometimes you can feel turbulence, like when you are taking a flight and suddenly the smooth flying would become chaotic, uh, shaking, bumping, and the swinging, so on and so forth. The most of the time, turbulence is actually not that terrifying and you may even not feel it. So the turbulent motions in general, it can be, they can be as large as a few kilometers and they can be as small as a few uh, millimeters. And they play important role in our daily life by passing the energy across this wide range of scales. And the fundamental question I'm trying to answer is how the turbulence uh, actually connects the weather phenomenon across wide range of scales. For example, it may be able to take energy from the low and the high that we see on the weather map and can pass energy to some localized uh, phenomenon like cumulus cloud formation or even tornadoes. And it can also like say lift the dust and other pollutants from the ground yeah. to these kind of things. I saw that one of your recent papers, you, you mentioned tornadoes, you did recently collaborate with Dr. Paul Markowski, one of our tornado researchers. Tell us about that collaboration. Yeah, thank you for being interested in that. So that paper is about how turbulence is going to take the energy from the horizontal rotation of a tornado and the past energy to the updraft in the tornado center. And that mechanism is through the surface drag. And usually in the weather models, we kind of assume the surface drag is in the 
opposite direction of the mean wind direction, so near the surface. However, turbulence actually it is able to change that direction of the surface drag. And by doing this, uh, in some extreme cases, turbulence, this mechanism can actually um, double the intensity of tornadoes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We only and, have about a minute left, but there was a, another recent paper I saw your name on that I just had to ask about. It uses data collected in a walnut orchard. How does that fit into your research interests? Um, yeah, so actually the walnut orchard is something that you will, like it represents something that you will often see on the earth's surface, like the trees, the crops, the buildings, this kind of thing. So we're very interested in how we can represent the turbulent motions over those kind of surfaces. And in this experiment, they used a few tens of sensors to connect the data that they have 60 data points per second for about three months or so. And in this paper, this paper is about how to reduce the uncertainty of analyzing this data. And so it's about to develop the new statistical techniques because we actually cannot understand anything without the statistical tools. Gotcha. Already, we're out of time. Dr. Ying Pan, one of my colleagues in the Penn State Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science, thanks for stopping by, Ying. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much for having me here. And we'll be back in a moment with a recap of the short range forecast.